Who wants to get the win today? They have to make sure that they shut her down at the top of the lineup. First pitch underway, 78 degrees. Fantastic night to be at the ballpark. These two teams didn't meet each other last season, so second year in a row to play. Ball and a strike, the count on Rocha. Susan Eads is our home plate umpire tonight. Kevin Wallace umpire at first base. Christina Bates umpire at third. Up and outside, 2-1 count on Rocha. It's really important today for Lily Witten to come out and just do what she's been doing all year long. Maybe she hasn't gotten the opportunities that she wished she had under Coach Anderson, but after taking that red shirt year last year, she's coming back and really trying to fight her stride in this pitching staff. And she's done a really good job so far this year when she has gotten those opportunities. She really has as she starts tonight's game with a ground out as Rocha is put away. What you're talking about, that is exactly why Missouri head coach Larissa Anderson wanted to start Witten in the circle. She's been really good when she's pitched this season and down the stretch here, Missouri will have to rely and lean on the sophomore pitcher. First offering to the new batter, Jenna Heron. Off the mark, Heron is senior from Illinois. See her numbers this season. She's currently 0 for her last seven. That's the longest drought this season at the plate for her. This is an SIUE team. They're coming off a weekend series against Tennessee State. They got swept in Nashville. They're trying to bounce back. This is the one and only Power Five team that SIUE plays this season. Swing and a miss, a strikeout. The first tonight for Lily Witten. We're gonna see a lot of this from Lily Witten tonight is that curveball on the outer half of the plate. She did three of them in that at bat, all back to back to back, going a little bit farther out each time. Does a really good job, get the batter to chase, get her first strikeout of the game. This is Grace Leakey. Leakey is senior from Illinois. Leads SIUE in multiple categories, four different offensive categories. Leakey did play in this game last year on the same field. She went 0 for 2 last year to draw a walk. That turned out to be an 8-1 victory for Missouri against SIUE last year. As you see Larissa Anderson looks on. Year number six for her is the head coach for the Tigers. Got the corner, two and two. So far, Whitten has done a very good job of making sure that she gets ahead of these batters. Yes, she got down 2-0 in this count, but she came right back with two curveballs on the out, outer half of the plate, made her so, success, so successful keeping these batters off balance. Almost got another strikeout. First base umpire Kevin Wallace says Leakey does not go around. Full count. The 3 2 to Leakey, a swing and a miss. Back to back strikeouts in the circle for Lily Witten. The course of her career, she actually started, or rather pitched in this game against Missouri last year. She went five and a third in relief, had two strikeouts, two walks in that outing. Look at her numbers this season. Big spot for her picking up 
Power five start on the road. She's facing the lead all batter. One thing, about one thing about Sydney Ballman is that she's going to work those outside corners with that curve and that drop ball on both sides. If she's able to make sure that she continues to use those spots against these Missouri batters, then she might have a good opportunity to get as many outs as she can against them today. Jitta Laird reaches on an infield single. Good job by Paige Rocha to get to the softball. It was almost like it was a line drive, but it wasn't hit very hard off right. of her bat. Almost a little squibber coming off. Rocha does a good job keeping this ball in front. By the time she gets up and transfers it, General Lair just has too much speed getting down that line. And there she goes, though, by the catcher. Henderson ends up in center field. It's backed up by Shuey. So it's a stolen base for Jenna Laird, her team leading 13th this season. Not something that is uncommon for the Missouri batters with Jenna Laird getting on first base. Larissa Anderson talks about her speed all the time, how she has the ability to turn a single into a double whenever she can just because of her ability to steal bases. Last year, she had near 20 stolen bases. This year, up to 13. She's a very good leadoff hitter, very good catalyst when she gets on base for the big hitters behind her and Alex Honnold and, Jenna and Maddie Gallagher. Yeah, she really is. She's now three stolen bases away from 80 in her career. That gets away from the catcher momentarily, Henderson. Laird stays put at second. As we were just talking about those stolen bases, maybe one of those that if she would have read a little bit earlier, she could have been on third base, got away from Henderson just a little bit too much. Don't think she got that read right off the bat, so she wanted to be a little bit more safe in the top of the first. That's called a strike, two and two. So the batter, this is Alex Honnold, senior out of West Des Moines, Iowa. Second team SEC selection last year. Honnold has now played in 208 games in her Missouri career. She's a career 331 hitter. Three, two. It's cold strike three. First strikeout of the game for Sydney Bowman. This is not something we see out of Alex Honnold. Very, very little. She, there's this drop on the inside corner. Ballman gets the call here. Could have gone back and forth, but not something we're used to seeing out of Alex Honnold. Usually she goes up there looking for a good pitch and swinging. Great job by Ballman again, going in and out with that curve and that drop ball. Keep Alex Honnold off balance. Yeah, to your point, that's only the ninth time this season that Honnold has struck out. The new batter, this is Maddie Gallagher, senior out of Port Washington, New York. Gallagher has been on a roll as of late, six game hitting streak. Cranks it to center field for a base hit. Jenna Laird gets waved home. The throw by Shuey, it's cut off. It's an RBI's base hit by Maddie Gallagher. Missouri takes a 1-0 lead. Can't ask for a better start here for the Missouri Tiger offense. Jenna Laird gets on with a single. She steals a base. Alex Honnold then strikes out, but Maddie Gallagher has her back. This pitch is a little bit too much down the middle. She has been seeing the ball so great of late. And when she does, this whole offense just revolves around her. She is a huge catalyst in that three hole. A transfer over from South Carolina last year, and she's really been the heart and soul of this offense of recently behind Jenna Laird and Alex Honnold. That was the first hit of her career against SAUE. And it's an RBI base hit up the middle. Daly is the new hitter. Floats this in the air. Catch is made by Ballman in the circle for the second out. Ballman started on the outside corner with Kara Daly, and then she comes right back inside on the hands. Kara, Kara Daly doesn't know what to do with that pitch just because she saw it on the outside part before. Ballman, again, another good job making sure she goes in and out with these hitters, keeping their eyes 
keeping their eyes at different levels and also throwing them different pitches. First pitch is a strike to the new batter. This is Abby Hay, freshman from right here in Columbia. Both parents, student athletes at Mizzou. Dad John baseball for the Tigers as this is skied in the air to right field. East Lava makes the catch shy of the warning track for the final out of the inning. Quick start though for Missouri. After one, Missouri NCAA tournament. Played for the OVC tournament title last year. There's the new batter leading off here for SAUE. It's the junior Emma Henderson at a battleground Indiana. An Iowa transfer. It was a foul. Ball and a strike on Henderson. She played 52 games at Iowa. Got the edge, one ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. This is three strikeouts in a row in the circle for Witten. There's nothing that Coach Anderson can ask more of Lily Witten so far. She comes back in. It's a rise ball inside this time. When you're pounding the outside corner with that curveball, then you come back in with something a little bit higher. It's so deceptive to these hitters because they're thinking everything's going to be flat across the zone going to the outside corner. But instead, this time, changes the eye level, brings it inside, and makes the batter think a little bit more. She gets, she gets that strikeout swinging because of it. Here's the junior, Lauren Islava out of California. This is game number 139 for her in her SIUE career. Second team OVC pick in 2022. Had a freshman program record for single season home runs with nine. She has launched 16 home runs in her career. When you have a pitcher like Lily Witten so far coming in and just pounding the zone, hitting the outside corners, inside corners, you got to think, what do these SIU batters need to do in order to beat Lily Witten in this mind game in the Missouri Tigers? And we just saw it in this at bat. She was early in the count, things in the zone. That's what they need to get to is those balls across the plate that are going in and out. Again, with that fastball inside, the curveball to the outside, they need to attack those pitches. So that way Lily, Wh Lily Witten can't get ahead to throw those pitches maybe up or lower in the zone like we just saw right there. Yeah, now Islava, she's in the driver's seat, 3-1 count. Lily Witten picking up her third start of the season tonight. 3-1 line drive just fell. It's now a full count. Vizlava this season leads SIUE in stolen bases. She's also has two triples as well to lead the Cougars. Three-two pitch from Witten. And this is what you want to start seeing out of these hitters, relaying that information to each other. Hey, she's pitching that curveball to the outside corner. If you get that early enough in the, in the count, go ahead and go for it. He's always doing a really good job right now. Anything in the zone, making sure she fouls off until she gets a good pitch that she can drive herself. Misses high for ball four. That is a really good plate appearance by Lauren Islava. 
and she gets rewarded with it. Again, fouling those pitches off. That might be a little bit corner. They could go one way or the other with the strike, but she fouls them off just to make sure. Leaves that one high that's really been getting these um, SIU beat. SIUE batters out so far and she's done a really she did a really good job and she's awarded that walk on that at bat first base runner tonight for the Cougars Anderson jumps on the first pitch flips it in the air to center field catches made by Honnold for the second out we can already see the difference between inning one and inning two for these batters aggressive early in the count going after those pitches off of Lily Witten because when Lily Witten gets ahead, that's when she is really, really good with that rise ball. Now, Lily Witten has to come back and figure out, all right, these batters are being aggressive. What do I need to do from here? Maybe get them a little off balance with my changeup rise ball early in the count. If she's able to do that, she's going to keep being successful like she has been so far. Strike one on the new batter. This is Kaylin Sailors, a junior from Iowa. Junior College transfer, Des Moines Area Community College. Went to the Junior College World Series. And here she is again, she's ahead in the count. She's been able to do that a lot early so far tonight. And when she's able to do that, she can make these batters chase balls out of the zone, bring that rise ball inside, maybe outside, get them to chase with that changeup as well too. So look for something here that Lily Witten can get ahead with and get these batters to chase. Ground ball to third. This is a fair ball and it's tucked away in the corner. East Lava. Windmill is on, the relay throw by Lear towards home. It's not in time, and the Cougars tie it at one in the top of the second. This 0-2 pitch missed too much of the plate, and when that happens, it's going to be jumped on, and that is exactly what happens in this situation. She gets it right past the third baseman, and then a little bit of bobble in left field, and with these, these lava speed, you knew that she was going to get home just because of that little bobble. Again, the SIUE Cougars are coming in and they're aggressive, they're attacking. They are not scared of these Missouri Tigers, even though of late the Missouri Tigers have been super, super hot. Salyers breaks an 0 for 7 streak with her second double of the season. It's her fifth RBI. Shuey is the new batter. She takes strike one. Chewy, a junior out of Bloomington, Illinois. Played at Danville Area Community College in Illinois where she led all of junior college with 10 triples. Ground ball to third and Daly actually makes the catch in the air for the final. Big, another big lefty hitter. She's coming in and she's been super aggressive, getting good pitches in the count. And she was rewarded with that last week with the SEC Freshman of the Week. She hit 417 in a four game stretch. As you see her numbers, the home run came at Drake. Lays off that offering, it's a 2-0 count. This is something that the Missouri Tigers needed as well too. They needed someone to step up and fill that DP role. There's been a lot of players that have been in and out of that position just because there's no consistency with these batters when they come up. But Abrascado has done a really good job making sure that she just finds ways to get on base. She gets base hits when she needs to. She doesn't need to have those big poppy numbers like a Jenna Laird or an Alex Honnold might need to, but she's doing her job and she's getting rewarded with it with her continual starts in a row. Yeah, as you said, did not start the season, but she has definitely made the most of her opportunities. When did you feel that the light bulb went off for you in your in your freshman season? I don't think it was ever in my freshman season because I felt like I just needed to learn so much when I got to this role. And when you're playing as a freshman, you're still trying to figure out the type of player that you are. You turn into a sophomore, you have a year underneath your belt, and you actually understand what it takes to play at this level. When you're a freshman, you're just trying to keep your head above water. You're just trying to find ways in the lineup each and every day and taking the most of your opportunities. This is flipped Fallon out of play, so three and two it stays. <laughs> 
Prescato from Smithtown, New York. Get a lot of New York flavor on this Missouri roster with Larissa Anderson and her ties to that area. As that pitch misses, low for ball four. First walk tonight by Sydney Ballman. And again, that's all she needs to do. She just needs to continually find ways on base one or two times a game with either a walk, a hit by pitch. She gets her hits here and there as well. But that's why she's continually in the lineup is because she gets those walks. She hits the ball hard. She finds the holes where they need to be. And when she's able to do that, there's, there's no way that Lewis Anderson can keep her out of the lineup. Here's another freshman at the plate for Missouri. It's Madison Walker. She's from Kansas, was the Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year coming out of high school. Talk about another freshman that has been in and out of the lineup so far this year. She got the start at the beginning of the year. How about that bunt? Placed it perfectly to put the runner in scoring position. And sometimes that's all you need to do with your job and the opportunity you get in the game. She hasn't been playing that much of recent, but when you get called upon to do a job like that, a little sacrifice, that can even get you kick-started sometimes. So great job by the freshman doing her job and moving that runner over to second base. So one out in the inning. The new batter, Maya Dodge, was the SEC Player of the Week earlier this month. Get three doubles, two home runs, and 11 RBIs. <laughs> Send it down to Shea for Missouri's approach at the plate. When speaking with Coach Anderson yesterday, she said one of the biggest things that their offense needs to do is have their hitters look to hit every single pitch and you're seeing that pitch, your hitters are getting deep into counts and they're having a hard time getting to base. The hitters really need to start looking to hit every single pitch in order to advance. One, two, swing and a miss. A strikeout for Sydney Bowman. That's her second. And we see what Shea was just talking about. My Dodge takes two strikes on the corner to get that out get that at bat started off and then Ballman comes back a little bit elevated on this pitch. Maya Dodge has to go after it because it's too close in the zone. But again, she got down in the count to start and she had to expand her zone even more from that, from getting a down two strikes. This is the number nine batter in the lineup. Kaylee Linger, a sophomore from Liberty, Missouri. Two outs, runner on second base. What is the biggest hurdle to overcome when you're behind an account at the plate? One of the big things you got to think about is when you're down two strikes, you have to expand your zone a little bit because the umpire might get a little jump happy and try and call you out. So as long as you're able to find a way to shorten up your stride, shorten up your swing path to try and just put the ball in play, because at that point it's it's fight or flight. And you got to find a way to put that ball in play. Anything close, got to get on top of that rise ball, that outside pitch. Maybe you just have to open it up a little bit more. It's all about a mentality going up to that plate with two strikes, knowing that anything close, I got to find a way to put it in play. Linger fouls it back, so one and two it stays. Missouri trying to manufacture a run in the bottom of the second. See what. Linger has done this season with runners in scoring position. That is outstanding for the sophomore. And you can see why she's fouled off the last two pitches that she's seen. And she really is that good nine hole hitter that can turn it over to the top of the lineup. She leads this team with 16 hit by pitches so far this year. She understands what her job is in that nine hole. It's to turn it over to the big hitters and Jenna Laird and Alex Honnold. And she's done a great job so far making sure she just finds ways to get on base and again turn that lineup over to Jenna Laird. Yeah, not only does that lead the team for Missouri, that is the most in the conference. She's been hit by a pitch 16 times this season. That is a lot. 
And she also accepts this role too. She knows that she doesn't have to hit the ball hard every single time. As long as she finds ways on base, she knows her job is to flip the lineup over and she does a very good job of it. Good job of it in that nine hole. That pitch nearly grazed her. It's a 2-2 count. Hammer deep to left field here in move. Watches it sail over the wall. It's a two-run shot for the sophomore, Kaylee Linger. Her second blast this year, and Missouri retakes the lead. Why get hit by pitch when you can just hit it out? Kaylee Langer does a very good job making sure she fights off pitches that are maybe on the edge of the plate, not something that she can drive. And then she finally gets a pitch over the heart of the plate and absolutely crushes it. That was belt high, just hammered over the left field wall. Left fielder knew it too. She only took a couple steps back but she knew that it was going to be out. Great at bat by Kaylee Langer. Top of the order for Missouri. Can you describe the feeling when you just blast one like that? When you know it's a home run. It almost feels as if it barely comes off of your bat, like you barely make contact with it just because. Well, this is lifted in the air to center field. Chewy hauls it in for the third and two hitters to begin the top of the third. This is the freshman Malia Blumenkamp from Freeburg, Illinois. What are your thoughts about the job Lily Witten has done so far in the circle? She's done what she's needed to do. She gave up one hit down the line when your right fielder then makes an error as well. But she's done, she's came in the circle and she's found ways to get out of innings when she's needed to. Hitting the corners so far with that drop in that curveball, bringing that rise ball in as well to get those strikeouts. But again, sometimes she needs to learn that when she is up in the count, she doesn't necessarily have to throw it in the zone. She can get the batters to chase, switch up their eye levels, maybe up or down a little bit. But again, this is her first full year of pitching. This is something that she is going to learn when she gets more experience, gets more starts. And again, she so far has done a really nice job in this position. Well, that's a big reason why she got the start tonight. Larissa Anderson wants her to get that experience, especially down the home stretch. This is the last non-conference game of the regular season. After tonight, it is all SEC games to close the regular season for Missouri. Swing and a miss. Throw down to first by the catcher is in time. It's the fourth strikeout tonight for Lily Witten. One of the few change-ups that we've seen so far from her today. But again, when she was ahead in the count, she threw that change-up a little bit farther down, got, in the, got it in the dirt a little bit, and got the batter to chase. And then on that drop third strike, we got that throw down to first base. So another great job by Lily Witten, making, making sure that she's pitching her pitches and making the batter chase from them. It's the top of the order for SAUE. Paige Rocha steps in. She's from Missouri. Now in her junior season, she's 0 for 1 tonight. OBC Player of the Week earlier this month. She's got the most hits in the conference with 65. Look at what she's been able to do. Look at that damage she's done. Not only at OBC play, but that's every game this year. Started her career at Wichita State, played in just seven games. to add to her list of accomplishments as well too. She had a school record 29 game hit streak. It got broke this last weekend in their last series against Tennessee State. 
And again, that was the longest streak among active D1 players as well, too. So she has a lot of numbers to her name. She's a very lethal hitter at the top of the lineup for this for this SIUE Cougars team. And she does a good job making sure she gets on base for her fellow teammates. Yeah, she really does. Even though she had her streak snapped, she still had five hits in the series against Tennessee State. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Witten. And another changeup this time down in the zone. This is what you love to see from Lily Witten, making sure that she's keeping these batters off balance, especially Roca. It goes down in the zone. She does not get her timing with it, out front with it. Lily Witten doing a good job making sure she mixes in those off speeds as well. What makes a changeup so difficult to hit? When you have a pitcher like Witten who throws low to mid 60s, with some up movement, a little bit across the zone, and then you also mix in an off speed that's 10 mile an hour slower. That just messes up your batter's timing. It messes up the pitch recognition out of the hand. That's why it makes it so effective because then not only do you have to wait on a pitch that might be coming a little bit slower though, it comes out of the hand differently and you might not be able to recognize that since you've only been seeing that fast movement going up or out as well too. Jenna Heron, the new batter. 0 for 1 with a strikeout tonight. That went a little too far outside. 2 and 1. Heron, O oh, for her last eight. It's the longest dry spell for her at the plate this season. Two, one, lifted in the air to left field. Dodge backs up, makes the catch. And the inning is over. That's what makes her so dangerous and effective is that no matter what pitch you are going to give her in the zone, she will drive it, will attack it. She's so good in that two hole behind Jenna Laird because she finds ways to get the runner over and score her as well too. She has been so good ever since she's been in this Tiger uniform. Here's her first base hit tonight. Hard turnaround first. She has a stand up double to begin the bottom of the third, her conference leading 19th double this season. Like we talked about before, she got a pitch in the zone that she could attack. First at bat, that was not the Alex Honnold that we're used to. Anything in the zone, she usually would have, would have attacked. But now she found one. She was aggressive. She hit that right back up the middle. Team leading and SEC leading 19th double of the year. New batter, this is Maddie Gallagher who takes strike one. Had an RBI single in the first to drive in Jenna Laird for the first run of the ball game. Gallagher has now hit safely in her last seven games. One, one, fly ball, left field here and glides over, makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Big first out in the circle for Ball. And she needed that after Maddie Gallagher's first at bat, driving it up the middle, get the first RBI of the game. Of recent, Gallagher has been extremely hot, and she's been finding those good pitches to be aggressive on. And when she's been hot, again, this Missouri team has been hot. Look for her to really continue that success this year as all of her numbers from last year to this year have increased. Batter, this is Kara Daly, 0 for 2. Trying to get back on track. She is now 0 for her last 14. 
But it shows you Kara Daly still being in that four hole, how much Larissa Anderson trusts and how much confidence she has in her. Kara Daly has a ton of pop. You can just see it in her stature. She's pretty tall. She's very, very strong. She gets anything in the zone. She really can hit it out of here real quick, but she's just been in that slump of recent, thinking too much at the plate, trying to be too selective. And, when the, and then when she does get a good pitch, not maybe hitting barrel, they need her to get going at the end of this year because when you have one, two, and three who have been so successful, you got to have someone after her that'll be able to hit those runners in, be that good four-hole hitter. Again, there's so much confidence in Kara Daly. They're just waiting for her to explode and break out of this, uh, this slump that she's been in so far this year. Yeah, you look at her numbers, 28 career home runs, 20 career doubles. She definitely has the pop. This time gets jammed and flips it foul. It's now a 3-2 count. Fan made an outstanding catch. On top of that, that, she just hit that to her mom as well, too. Her mom <laughs> just made that catch. Sports Center top 10 play coming out here, too. <laughs> Three, two, hits softly right side. Tilliers gets to it, floats to first, just in time to record the second outs. Runner Honnold advances to third base. First baseman number 36, Abby Hay. So two outs, runner on third for the freshman, Abby Hay. Rissa Anderson told us that she feels Abby Hay has progressed so much at the plate throughout the course of this season. You can just tell she's getting more comfortable and comfortable as the games go on. She is. She didn't start the year at first base, wasn't expected to get, to get a ton of playing time, a few at-bats here and there. But then she got that opportunity at first base, and she has not skipped one beat. She's aggressive at first base. She gets the plays. She, get, she hits the ball hard as well, too. But again, there are some growing pains that come with freshmen, and mm -hmm. she, they're going through that with Abby Hay right now. But with the confidence and the at-bats that she's putting together and the solid first base play, Larissa Anderson feels as though she has deserved these starts of recent. And we can see it again, her moving up to that five-hole position. And she's done a really good job of producing when the time is needed. Still hitting above 300 this season in her opportunities. 0-2 lifted in the air deep to center field. It's a long run for Shuey. Now makes the catch for the final out. After she gets ahead, so these SIU hitters got to make sure that that pitch, that might be the best one that they see all day, they're attacking it early in the count. For the Cougars, three, four, five batters here in the top of the fourth. Only run scored so far tonight for SIUE. It was an RBI double in the second. Leakey struck out in her first plate appearance in the first. Leakey has played in over 150 games throughout the course of her career. And she's been able to battle and come back from adversity. She tore her ACL, missed a lot of, of time, but has bounced back and played at a really high level for SOUE. Has the program record for single season home runs with 12. Look at the difference a season makes last year to this year. And it's really hard coming back from a significant injury like she just had, not only the mental side of it, but also the physical rehab that you have to go through as well. So kudos to Leakey getting back to a very high extreme level of softball. Pops out to Jenna Lear to begin the fourth. So one out bases are empty for the junior, Emma Henderson. Henderson, a two-way player for SIUE. Her first season playing for the Cougars. Pop 
pops that pitch foul for strike one. So Emma Henderson on the team, as is her sister, Anna Henderson. They both came over from Iowa, continuing to play with each other. Has to be a blast to play with your twin sister, right? And they decided to go together, which couldn't be a better story. You go from the University of Iowa, you transfer together to SIUE, you continue to be able to play together. How awesome would that be to be able to say that you played collegiate softball with your sister, you guys together, no matter where you went. It's just a great story for the two of them. Well, Ben Sorden said that he's known Anna and Emma for a very long time. He was in the Big Ten, recruited them when he was in Michigan State. Here's a fly ball to center field. Catches made by Honnold. Just shy of the wall. It's one of the hardest hit balls we've seen today. And on top of that, it comes on an 0-2 count as well, too. So far, I think that has really been the Achilles heel of Witten on the mound today is those 0-2 pitches have been too good over the plate. And again, when you leave stuff like that, it's going to be squared up. If she can learn to maybe get that a little bit higher, lower, outside of the zone, get the batter to chase a little bit, she's going to be very successful as her career continues to unfold here at Missouri. So you're a fan of wasting a pitch or two? I'm not saying wasting a pitch. I'm saying that anything out of the zone that has a little bit more movement than normal that you might not throw for a strike is really good in those counts because again, you can throw your best pitch there. Sometimes your best pitch doesn't even have to be a strike in the zone. Witten just has too much of the plate when she's ahead with two strikes, no matter in what count she's been in so far. And I believe that's why these SIUE hitters aren't necessarily fooled with those two strikes. And they're getting those hard hits. Again, a double down the line and then that ball that we just hit straight to center field. A double down the line. That's been the only base hit so far tonight for SIUE. That occurred in the second. That tied the game at one. Islava hammers it to straightaway center field. Honnold makes the catch shy of the wall. All three outs. Thanks, guys. Coach, what are you seeing and liking from Lily Witten right now as she has five strikeouts so far? She's spinning the ball really nice, throwing both sides of the plate and keeping them off balance with her changeup. And what do you need to do to keep her and the rest of your pitchers consistent for the rest of the game? Uh, you know, we just got to keep pounding the zone and really hit good spots. And I think, uh, you know, they hit the ball hard at that last inning. So I'm going to talk to my catcher here a little bit to see if she left the ball over the plate or if it was a little flat. Um, we have a couple people ready to go in the bullpen. So we're just going one pitch at a time. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck. Thanks, M-I-Z. Thanks, Shay. What's your favorite memory with Coach Anderson? So I never officially committed under Coach Anderson. She came in my sophomore year. So there was an adjustment period between her and between us. So we went through some challenging times at the beginning together just because she was trying to figure out her coaching style here at Missouri. But I think one of the greatest coaching memories I had was 2022 when we were able to host regionals and super regionals here and it was our first time hosting regionals as well too you could just see the pure excitement she was to be here in front of the Missouri fans and to be able to host with 16 teams left in the country she just has so much love and passion for this game and she does her best every single day day in day out to get the best results out of her players that's why I think there was such a good relationship between her and her players just because she knows what to expect of them, and they know what to expect of her every day. Yeah, Missouri went to the Super Regionals in 2021, a team that won over 40 games that year. She is now year number six as the head coach for Missouri. Before that, head coach at Hofstra for four years. Won the CAA twice. New batter, this is Madison Walker. Had a sacrifice bunt in the second. So after tonight, Missouri will hit the road. Just three weekends left in SEC play. Missouri will take on Georgia in Athens. Popped up 
Left side, foul territory. Leakey chases after it and it almost made the catch. Had it in her mitt and it popped out at the last second. Almost a sports center top 10 play here from Leakey. Comes over from that third base position on a really high pop fly on a field that maybe she's not used to as well too. Has it in her glove, hits the ball and just pops out out of play. Softly hit, Leakey scoops it up, throws it over to first base in time. That seems that seems fitting, doesn't it? Almost made a highlight real catch. Very next pitch, ground ball out to third. It's one of those where you say ball doesn't lie. She almost made a Sports Center top 10 play, and then it was like, you know what? You can get this out instead. We feel a little bad for you that your Sports Center ten, Sports Center top 10 play got taken away from you. Missouri will have a new batter at the plate in the eight spot. The new hitter, it's the senior, Shantese Phillips out of Kansas City. See the numbers this season for Phillips. She's now played in 93 games at Missouri. So Sydney Bowman approaching 65 pitches. So far has gone three and two thirds, two strikeouts and a walk. Phillips started the year in left field where she had a ton of opportunities and she's a senior. Coach Anderson started her again but she ha hasn't quite found her footing in the batter's box. And that's why Maya Dodge then got that opportunity and Maya Dodge did well sometimes. But again, that left field position has kind of been back and forth between the two of them. Coach Anderson's just trying to find consistency out of one of them. One might have a good week this week, the next week might be the other one. Defensively, they're both very talented out in left field, but it's the bat that they gotta try and find that consistency with. Popped up to third, Leakey hauls it in for the final outs of the inning as Missouri goes down in order. One good situation towards the end of the season that we might see a regional here as well too, as long as they continue with their hot streak and getting the wins when they need them. Anna Henderson leads off. But that just shows you how good the SEC is. Everybody makes the NCAA tournament. Nobody really out of the top 50 in the RPI because everybody plays each other and everybody is good. Day in and day out, it is the toughest conference overall in the whole country. You see such good teams from the first being Tennessee where they, they have just exploded last year and this year. They have a stud in the circle. They have really good hitters as well, too. But also even those that might be at the bottom of the conference as well, too, and Ole Miss, Mississippi State, they still take games from these big teams just because of the competition that they that they see day in and day out. You're going to see a lot of these teams making the NCAA tournament at the end of the year. Another strikeout for Lily Witten. She's up to six tonight. The most strikeouts in her career is eight. Did that earlier this season against San Diego State, or the South Dakota State. This ball is hammered and gets all the way to the wall. Sailors trots into second with a stand-up double. Just the second base hit tonight for SIUE. early in this count. She gets a ball over the heart of the plate. Something fast she can attack and she does not miss this. Hit and hits it into the left center gap. Gets some momentum back on the Cougars in the, Coug in the Cougars dugout. So she only had one double all season and tonight she has two doubles. Danielle Shuey is at the plate. 
Represents the tying run. This is a Cougars team. They don't really hit a lot of home runs, just 11 all season. But if they're able to find a way to get this run, ac run across, that 3-1 lead is then going to turn into a 3-2 lead, which is only a one-run game. Gives them so much confidence going into the later half of this game just because they know they are one swing away from tying this game against the only Power 5 team that they're going to see this year. Now an 0-2 count on Shuey. Mentioned the only Power 5 opponent this season for SOUE. These two teams have clashed tonight. Marks the 11th meeting all time. Missouri is 9-1 and one all time against SIUE. Cougars' only win was back in 2009 when they won 2-0 in Columbia. Two-two count on Shuey. So Witten, she got ahead 0-2, which is going to go low and outside, and it's just misfired on her last three. The 3-2 to Shuey. Softly hit up the middle. Laird elects to go to first. That's the second out. Sailors advances from second to third. It's a Missouri baseball team. They had a huge series win against Florida just a few days ago. It's an LSU team defending national champs. Trying to buck a trend as of late. Win a national championship and struggle the next season. You see the pitches by inning so far for Lily Witten. Really facing adversity for the first time tonight with a runner on third base. Swing and a miss. This is Blumenkamp in the ninth spot. Struck out in the third. I feel like this is a very big point for both of these teams. If the Cougars can get one more run across, they get a lot more confidence back in their dugout. But the Missouri Tigers have to find a way to get out of this inning, limit the damage that has already happened, and again, find ways to get back in to where their offense can get more opportunities. What are you expecting here with a one-two count? She's going to attack the strike zone. We we know that's going to happen. But is it going to be her rise ball, change up, or curve ball that she's been going to all night long? That's what's going to get the batter guessing. Ground ball to third. Layer scoops and throws her first in time for the final out. What a play by Jenna Layer. Fifth. It's been the biggest thing that's jumped out to you so far tonight. The lack of production from the Missouri offense, we're so used to seeing them be so explosive, one through nine, everybody's getting hits. But it almost feel as if today that they haven't squared up as many balls as we're used to. They got their runs to begin the game, but it just hasn't been that consistent offensive explosion that we're used to. And here's another pop out to begin the fifth as the shortstop, Paige Rocha, makes the catch. Lineup turns over for Missouri. But it's not something that we're not used to seeing in these midweek games for Missouri. They had an earlier loss early in, earlier in the year to Southeast Missouri where they lost one to zero and they didn't even get a run across as well too. This is something that we're used to seeing from them and then they explode on the weekends as well. But you know Larissa Anderson in the back of her mind wants her team to score more than three runs against a mid-major team in a midweek matchup. Well, she told us one thing that she's been 
proud of with this group this season. Missouri has just been able to win a lot of games in a variety of ways, scoring more runs than base hits in a game. She said the team chemistry, it's off the charts this season, and it's shown on the field. It has. Results. And we're not going to see a ton of home runs from this team. Kaylee Langer, again, only two home runs on the year, hit one tonight. They're just going to beat you with a ton of base hits, singles, doubles, hit by pitch, walks. They have such great discipline up at the plate. They know what they are looking for. And they, can, they also have a ton of speed on the bases, ton of stolen bases. Makes the defense work when they, when they do get those base hits. She told us she felt early before the season even started that this was a very special group, that the buy-in was really, really good. And then the season starts and Missouri picked up a huge win against a very good Clemson team and program. At the time, Clemson was ranked fifth in the country. That was a 4-1 victory. And that really just kind of solidified her thoughts with this team this season. She said the buy-in has just been so, so good. And when you have a team that fully commits to what the coaches are trying to preach, you're only going to get positive attitudes and success from them. We've seen that so far this year for the Missouri Tigers. They just find ways to win. They want everybody to be successful. You have freshmen cheering on each other when maybe they might be playing the same position as you, but you're still so happy for them when they succeed. You can't ask for anything more as a coach when you put together a team that truly believe in, in each other and only want what's best for them. No jealousy, no people getting mad at each other. Everybody just truly wants to win and be successful. Quick two outs in the bottom of the fifth. How about the job Sydney Ballman has done so far in the circle? What are your thoughts on the job she's done so far? We know the Missouri Tigers have had a struggle so far this year on slower pitching and with changeups specifically. Ballman doesn't throw very hard, high 50s, low 60s. She's found ways to spot the ball, keep these Missouri batters off balance. And because of that, she hasn't given up a ton of hits today. Just gave up that two run home run to Kaylee. Kay this is Alex Honnold at the plate. Smacked a double back in the third. Her SEC leading 19th double this year. She's got five hits in her career against SIUE. Could this be another one? Fly ball to right field, twisting and turning and making the catch is Lauren Islava for the final out. Smile on the face of the Cougar right fielder. And Missouri goes down in order one, two, three for the second inning in a row after five in Columbia, 3-1 advantage for the Tigers. At the plate. Rocha 0 for 2 tonight. That has been very rare for her this season. So your numbers so far this season, leading the OVC in several categories. She's got 19 doubles herself to lead the conference. Falls behind quickly, 0-2. Oh How about the career accolades for Paige Rocha? Most hits in Division One as well. It's outside one and two. So Lily Witten got the start tonight, her third this season. Her career-long outing was against South Dakota State. That was six innings. She can potentially match that or surpass it tonight. She's really showing to Coach Anderson tonight that she deserves an opportunity and maybe one of the bigger games that they play so far in this season. You talked about it before. Coach Anderson says that they're going to need her at the end of the year. She might get some in innings here and there, but if she gets the experience underneath her belt, you already know that she's going to have those big opportunities at the end of the year. 
What a smooth play by Matty Gallagher at second to begin the sixth inning. Matty Gallagher has came in after transferring in last year from South Carolina and really solidified this second base spot. She has such great range over there and she knows that she can get to balls like that. And she's done a great job defensively up the middle between her, Jen, her and Jenna Lair. They really have been a tandem and a duo together since she's came here. Jenna Heron, the new batter. Cougars so far tonight, only three base runners, one walk and two doubles for Kaylin Sailors. That has been it. And again, Witten done a really nice job tonight of getting out ahead in the count early. What do you think makes a good two-strike hitter? Someone that just has the ability to foul off pitches that might not be the best and find ways to make contact even on a pitcher's pitch because that's what they like to throw when there's an 0-2 count. And again, if they are able to expand their zone maybe just a little bit, hit pitches outside the zone, then they'll find ways to get on base. Jenna Laird scoops it up, slings it over to first base in time for the second out. You're not gonna find a more consistent glove in the in the SEC and in the nation than Jenna Laird. Gold glove winner a couple years ago. She is so smooth, has such great hands over at shortstop. She's a four year starter for Missouri at shortstop as well too. So that just kind of shows you the command and the ability to just come in here, make a difference right away and be so good and consistent at the role that she has. And she's been that way all her four years since she's been here. So two outs, space is empty for the third baseman, Brace Leakey, 0 for 2 tonight. Talked a little bit about her story throughout the course of this one. Again for strike two, let's send it down to Shea. She's got more on Grace Leakey. Thanks guys. Grace Leakey has had a interesting path to get here. You mentioned her injuries earlier in her career and she has worked hard to get back to where she is. On Monday night, SIUE had their Cougar Awards and she was awarded the Cougar Courage Award and her coach says she is the definition of courage. The defense making all kind of play. Maddie Gallagher leads off, jumps on the first pitch, pops it up over to third as Leakey makes the catch. One pitch, one out to start the bottom of the six. Sydney Bowman really starting to find her groove in the circle. She is retired 10 in a row. And that's something that this Missouri team has got to figure out going into SEC play against a very good Georgia staff this weekend. They cannot go 10 in a row without getting on base. These Tigers have found a way to do that in their SEC games, but they just haven't found a way to do it in the midweek matchup. And because of that, maybe something that Coach Anderson is thinking about or maybe these players are thinking about is it's a midweek matchup. Maybe not going to see as hard as pitch, as hard of pitching, maybe not as much movement, but they got to find a way to attack and be more aggressive with these types of pitchers compared to the SEC that they're used to seeing. New hitter at the plate for Missouri. It's a sophomore, Katie Chester, out of Liberty, Missouri. Chester actually started in this game against SAUE last year. She went 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. So Ballman has only surrendered four hits, gave up a leadoff double in the third to Alex Honnold. 
and then since then they shut Missouri down as this is yanked foul. See what Missouri has done at the plate tonight. Really quick start as all four of those hits came in the first three innings. This is flipped in the air right side and it's off the mitt of the second baseman Sailors in foul territory. So new life here at the plate for Daly. Not only have the struggles been there for Missouri as well too, but we've seen it on the other, other side for SIUE as well too. Today's been more of a pitching battle than has been an offensive explosion for either one of these teams. We would expect it coming out of Missouri being very hot after their two wins this weekend against Florida. But so far, they just haven't had that consistent at bat at bats that we're used to seeing. That's a great response for Bowman. Didn't let that ball off the mid and foul territory bother. So how does she respond with a strikeout? This is her third tonight on the inner half of the plate after she just threw a curveball to the other half. There's a screwball this time inside half of the plate. Chester can just not pull the trigger on that pitch. Gets another strikeout for Ballman. Two outs, bases are empty. This is the freshman, Abby Hay. Oh, for two with a pair of fly outs. So far today, I feel like Abby Hay has been the one that's been hitting the ball the hardest for the Missouri Tigers, but she doesn't have a hit to show for it. She had a line out to right center, she had a line out to right field, and then one to center field as well, too. You feel like she's almost on the cusp of really exploding, getting a good pitch, hitting it hard and hitting it pretty far. She is right there, and Coach Anderson sees that as well, too, giving her more opportunities as the year goes down later and with less and less games. Just nine games left in the regular season after tonight. That's popped up, fouling out of play, two and two. Well, that's been sorted. What do you remember most about this matchup from a season ago? And he just said it's one of those games where he thinks about a lot. If he just would have done this or that, maybe things would potentially have been different a season ago. What a job tonight by his teams on the road, playing their first Power Five opponent this season. I'm yeah. sure you can relate too, right? Just just changing one small thing here or there can change the outcome of a game. They have not shied away from this matchup as well too. They haven't played a Power Five team all year and they come in to the University of Missouri and they're making sure that they're hitting balls hard. Sydney Ballman, what a great performance from her as well. But again, they have not shied away from this type of level of game. Here's a base hit for Abby Hay. This snaps the 11 in a row were tired in the circle by Sydney Ballman. And we talked about it before. I felt like Abby Hay was just gonna finally get that base hit and she does this time sticking with her plan has had really good at bats so far today, and she gets rewarded for it in her third at bat today. So a two out base runner for Missouri. The batter, it's the freshman. Abriscato, SEC, freshman of the week this week. You see the new pitch runner on for the Tigers. First pitch in the gap, right center field, diving for it, passes Lava, heading for third, getting waved home, though by Sailors, not in time. Missouri adds all to their lead, 4-1 Tigers. Talk about the two freshmen coming up clutch with the two out hits today. Every Hay gets the single pinch runner put in for her, and then the SEC freshman of the week from last week, first pitch over the heart of the plate and she smokes this into the right center gap with the speed of the pinch runner coming in. You knew she was going to score on anything in the gap. Mizzou gets that much needed momentum back in their dugout. Gets a base runner across home plate as well too. Two out rally for Missouri. 
In the air, shallow right field. Islava has room. She's got it for the final. Maybe two innings, six outs is her max, but she does a good job at what she does, leading the SEC in saves and the nation in saves as well, too. She's accepted this role ever since she stepped in on this campus here at Missouri, and she's really excelled at it. Eight saves, as you said, tops in the country. Softly hit to third, Daly fires it over in time for the first out. What really makes Taylor Pennell so effective is she has a nasty changeup. Comes out of the hand the exact same as her curveball as well too. She finds ways to exploit the batter's weaknesses and because of that, they don't know what she's gonna pitch them at times. She finds ways to throw that curveball in on the hands but also throw the changeup as well too. That's what makes her so effective and been so good so far for them this year. <laughs> Lauren Islava takes strike two. She scored the only run tonight for the Cougars back in the second. She's also made some really great plays defensively in right field tonight as well. Ground ball right side, Gallagher comes up with it. Cougars have one out remaining. The longest outing of her career was against Cal last year. That was just two and a third. She has accepted this role and has been able to do all kinds of damage in the circle for Missouri. New hitter at the plate for the Cougars as the crowd stands on their feet. Madison Kearns is the new hitter. Junior out of Oklahoma. She is 0 for her last 19 at the plate. Missouri looking for win number 34 this season. Tigers won 35 games a season ago. Ground ball, this should do it. Pinnell over to first. Missouri wins it four to one to wrap up their season long four game homestand. And one of the key players of tonight's win for Missouri. Shay, take it away. Thank you guys. Kaylee, congratulations on a great game. You hit your second home run of the season. So what did, what was your approach uh, in your home run at bat? Um, it was a long at bat, just keeping focused and just making sure that everything was on time, get my backside on time um, and just seeing a pitch and letting it go for sure. So how did you feel rounding, home, rounding to home, earning your second home run of the season? Uh, good feeling, obviously really good feeling to get the lead for our team um, and take that lead. How do you feel getting your second home run of the season after not getting any last year at home? Uh, it's great just to get it for the team and work for the team.